Hello everybody, we are back. It is the last Raider and I've got another video for you. I messed up that intro so badly butchered my intro, but we're going to keep going no matter what because this, you, know, the, you know, the show must go on. So, saw a, man, there goes my, uh, one of these days I'm going to get a, a computer or something and I'm going to be able to do these videos properly okay <laughs> gonna be some higher quality videos and then i'm gonna see the channels just either skyrocket or stagnate one of the two but anyway we have a bunch of comic pros on the internet and i do hit this comic book stuff haven't been recently because the riots have just been ridiculous to watch uh, they're, they're so crazy you just have to do a video on them but as of right now we have a nice little just my microphone here. We have a nice little moment where comic book pros are saying, "Oh, see the the 2019 numbers have come out, and you know comics are going up. Comics comics are seeing growth. See, comics aren't dead. Uh, not really, because there's some context that you have to recognize. Uh, right now, what's going on is the comic book pros that are in the comic industry right now." are not seeing really a lot of growth. They're, they're actually seeing things go down. Uh, one of their big gambles is going down as well. Um, we'll just we'll just keep going on down through here until we find what, um, what we're going to look for right now at this point. So, driven by continued growth in popularity of the graphic novel format. There's a key word there, graphic novel. A graphic novel is not the same thing as a comic book. Uh, what Marvel and DC do is what you would call periodicals. And periodicals are what you would consider a traditional comic book. Uh, some people who have actually seen them, and, and, the, and the older people in our audience, that you'd be the classic, you know, floppy comic book that you would give, be made kind of cheap. Uh, was just something kids looked at and were expected to throw away. Sometimes they held on to them, sometimes they didn't. Um, graphic novels are entirely different. And if you want to look at what's a graphic novel, uh, I think the probably the simplest means of explaining a graphic novel would be to go to like a Barnes & Noble and go to their graphic novel section and you'll find little brick mangas. Uh, there'll be about three or four pay, three or four stories of uh, character-driven story going on with manga, or even with um, when it comes down to DC and Marvel, you run into stuff like you know uh, Green Lantern, Brightest Day, or uh, Crisis on Infinite Earths, and it'll, it'll be in one thick graphic novel content. Uh, the DC Marvel crossover is a great example of this. Almost all of the the main storyline, I actually have this one, and it's the main storyline in a graphic novel format. So you get all the comics that were you know within the main storyline, not all the offshoot storylines, but just the main storyline, and all that's in a single graphic novel. So you don't have to go out there and collect a whole bunch of floppies in order to get what you want, in order to get the complete story, you've got it all in one thick book. Um, there's a lot of... Uh, how do I put this? There's a lot of stories that were you know, done in periodicals that are just like a mini-series almost, or an event, and then that would be pushed in a graphic novel com uh, format. Another uh, means of graphic novel format is sometimes you'll have just a book dedicated to graphic novels. Now, here's the thing about graphic novels that people don't tell you is unlike floppy comics, which are predominantly run by superheroes, which will get down here, graphic novels usually are, a lot of times you're going to run into YA adaptations. Um, a perfect example of this is Artemis Fowl, Maximum Ride, uh, Ruby, Many of these are, you know, either books or shows. Ruby, uh, for instance, is actually a show from Rooster Teeth. That's where it got started. Artemis Fowl and Maximum Ride are both young adult novels that have been adapted 
uh, later on into a graphic novel format so that it's a little bit more easier to digest for a younger audience. Uh, Babysitter's Club has their own graphic novel now, too, if you, if you want to know. But you look at here at the numbers. Uh, 2019, North American sales graphic novels format were about 765 million of a one, what was it up here? Of a 1.21 billion estimated, um, or the 1.21 billion in estimated sales, basically. So, looking at the numbers down here, well over half of your graphic novels are being, are, are what's making up the, the market right now. Um, and I see how some people would try to say, well, you know, Marvel and DC would be doing good because a lot of their floppy comic events are, are graphic novels. But you got to think about this. A lot of the big selling events, the really good ones, like Superman Doomsday, um, what is it, uh, the Infinity, uh, Infinity War with Marvel, um, lots of just straight up events that would be going on, uh, let's see, also like the X-Men Apocalypse for Marvel, I'm trying to be fair here, <laughs> pull out a, a, an equal number, in just superheroes, these were already done as floppies, and you're basically doing a resale in graphic novels if they're being sold. What's interesting is comic book graphic novels are not normally sold uh, at places that are making the most money. Like over here, for instance, in 2019, North American sales of graphic novels format were about $765 million, while sales of periodical comics were about $355 million, not even half of what has been sold, with sales of digital comics at about $90 million. Happy to see that dying, by the way. I hate digital comics with a passion. That little pet project, that's been something that's been said by um, mainstream comics, was like, oh, but you know, you don't see the graphic novel sales... We see the graphic novel sales. They can't pass a hundred million. Okay, it it's clear you're not selling it. I ordered Walmart on Indiegogo and got a free digital download that I still haven't downloaded yet because it's like I download it to my phone and I'm going to change my phone out and I'm not going to have the digital download anymore. It's just it's going to take up space. I have the physical copy coming to my house. Okay, I bought a physical copy with a digital download. I'm going to read the physical copy. It's just easier on your eyes. You, you can absorb more of it. With a digital comic, they try to, they try to concentrate on all the panels, and then you, you've got to like zoom in sometimes because some panels are not uniform to the screen. So you'll end up with, you'll be doing, oh, this really nice one, and then it'll like zoom out like really good to a long panel. And then you've got to go through the panel as you go down. You can't absorb the art in its fullest. It's one of the reasons I hate digital. But, I mean, let's keep going here. Sales made through different retail channels rough, totaled roughly $570 million via the bookstore channel. In other words, Scholastic Books. Okay, it was about $570 million, with another $525 million in sales were via direct market comic shops which sell both periodical comics and book format comics and about 25 million in sales came via other channels which includes newsstands and crowdfunding you might as well say this wasn't even newsstands because if you've ever looked for comic books on a newsstand like at barnes and noble tried to find actual floppy comic books there you're not going to find them from uh, Marvel and DC because they're right now doing everything they can to sell them in comic shops, which are, are having a lot of difficulty right now. <laughs> um, but like I said, you look at the you look at the sales figures right here. More than again, more than half of the sales that you have coming in are coming in from things like Scholastic. Okay, the the magical bookstore, for instance, that your kids have at school, where they they come in there, and it's like it's a direct market to these kids. It's it's one of those direct market things. They're actually bringing the market to the customer, which is younger audiences. And like I said, this is not entirely dominated by superhero comics. And then you take into consideration twenty five million in crowdfunding. I can tell you right now, in twenty five million in crowdfunding. 
two guys are sitting on three million dollars of that twenty-five million. Two. One is Richard. C- one is Richard C. Meyer. The other one is Ethan Van Skyver. Richard C. Meyer, I know, has made well over a million dollars off his Jawbreakers, his Iron Sights comics, and many other that, uh, many others. He's going to clear. I probably will figure he's about to clear about two million dollars in just sales. Ethan Van Skyver has already hit the two million mark. Between the two of them, they're going to be pulling about one fifth of that mark of that twenty five million right there in just two people. That's not including all the other crowdfunding comics, such as Raging Golden Eagles comic, John Malin's comics, um, was it Vigilant, Don DeLacy. All of these other guys that have been going out there making big budget comics that have been making, you know, up in the hundreds of thousands of dollars, not tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of dollars, clearing almost half a million bucks a lot of times in many cases. These guys are selling big bank. I'm telling you, a good chunk of the 25 million right there is crowdfunding, which years ago was almost a wasn't even a blip on the radar it's now a good it's now a decent chunk of the market now when i say decent chunk of the market it's at a point where a regular um people are now starting to recognize it as a viable source of income now you got to remember these guys are also taking all their money and keeping it it's not like marvel and dc they're not taking they're actually probably showing more profit Margins, better profit margins than Marvel and DC are. Because Marvel and DC are hire, have hired a, a crap ton of staff members to run multiple comics that half the time do not sell. That they'll send, they'll send multiple variant covers. They'll have seven or eight variant covers. And when they get there, it'll be the same story with multiple different variant covers. And then it's always getting restarted. Captain Marvel versus Miss Marvel. Old school Miss Marvel, not the, the new story stretchy, always got to be disfigured Miss Marvel. But the old Carol Danvers versus new Carol Danvers is a great example of just how shitty the comic book market is. If you were to look at, and I should do a video on this, if you were to look at the original Miss Marvel and then compare that to the new Captain Marvel books that have come out, Captain Marvel, after being restarted five times, still cannot equal the same number of sales the original Miss Marvel book did in a single run. Okay? It went on for several... Miss Marvel went on for several years with Carol Danvers. In other words, she's running around a black leotard, knee-high boots, boobs, gloves, long flowing blonde hair... Versus the bodysuit, mental illness, haircut, super feminazi, built like a board, played by a plank of, built, actually, yeah, played by a, built like a board, played by a board of Brie Larson, and just failing abysmally. The book has, Captain Marvel has been restarted, I think, probably seven times so far, Okay. They have been trying to make this character relevant, and it doesn't work. And you look here at the sales, okay? Used to about just three or four years ago, they said digital sales were making up a good chunk of the market, and we're going to be an amazing chunk of the market before all. It's going to be over half the market at some point. Uh, They're barely making $90 in sales. They're actually dropping. I think they actually had over $100 in sales last year, okay? Another thing that hasn't really hit, and I guarantee you because... This is 2019 numbers. Okay? 2020 has seen Ethan Van Skyver's current Cyberfrog book come out. There's been a bunch more graphic novel come out. Richard Myers is now pulling good ch- is now pulling out several comics at once. He he's running about 4 or 5 comic books at a time with Expendables Go to Hell and many others. Um as I said, these are 2019 numbers. 2019 was a good year, folks. 2019 was a great year. There was no COVID in 2019. Um, yeah, when we see the 2020 numbers, it's going to be horrible. Right now, I think what's going on is <clears throat> comic book pros know that when 2020 hits, when we see the 2020 numbers, we're going to see a 
flat ass drop because there you got to remember in 2020 there was actually a point in time where Diamond Distributing Distributing who has a monopoly on the comic book distribution market to an extent who has been distributing comics for the big two for almost two decades now turned around and said we're not going to send out comics for over about a month to a month and a half I'm sorry if you're not making if your business is shut down and you got no new product for a month to a month and a half you are going to lose a good chunk of money okay we're going to see some I want to see 2020 because 2020 is going to be very interesting I don't give a shit about 2019 2019 I figured things were going to be kind of like what they are right now 2020 numbers hit finally when they finally get the numbers in you're going to see periodicals do a Abysmal. You're going to see crowdfunding comics making gains and probably graphic novels being sold at Scholastic make a few gains. They may actually know. Scholastic may actually take a hit because a lot of schools were canceled because of the COVID once it started. And Scholastic, a lot of their, they, they usually sell books on about the second and third, about the third and fourth quarter. Usually it's like a quarterly thing sometimes. So it's also going to have a big effect in 2020 because if schools are not allowed to open scholastic is going to lose a lot of money so you're going to see probably a lot more of this direct market from indie comics are probably going to make gains because they were you gotta remember indie comics were still selling during the covid crisis when the other comic shops were pencils down and you're going to see comic books go upward this is just proof of get woke go broke okay comic periodical comics Superhero comics, like in Marvel, look, you've got Captain America's been a Nazi. Captain Marvel is is just unsellable, okay? It, just, it doesn't sell very well. The X-Men, which was one of the heavy, which one of, was one of the juggernaut comics of Marvel. Now they are a segregationist, mutant supremacist group who goes around, and even if you're a loving, caring, normal human being with no mutant powers, and you have a mutant kid who's like purple and has four eyes, and you still love your child, and you're like, no, you know, th- this is my child. I biologically want to love them. The X Men now in the comic will pop in, kidnap your kid from you, whether the kid wants to leave or not, and take them over to their mutant supremacy utopia where no one dies so there's no there, there there's no cost there there's no real costs in it where Jean Grey pretty much walks around and passively aggressively deals with things uh none of it sounds very appealing anymore all right you got uh, I, I think I said this in a video you have Spider-Man who now has superhero alimony has been raped by another uh spider themed character and he just, he can't get a break. He can't find nothing. And I I kind of agree with some other people. I think there's going to be a big push they're going to do to him like they did Wolverine. Uh, by the way, Wolverine, the most manliest, badass character in all of Marvel, is now gay. Okay? They gave him a son that was gay. Now he's gay. And they're eventually going to make Spider-Man gay. Because they want a gay Spider-Man. Uh, people have been done saying they're going to do that. This is what's driving the comic market into the ground because it's just, it's politics. We want to make Spider-Man gay. Why? Because because we want a gay Spider-Man. Um, but why? Well, you know, gay Spider-Man should sell. If gay Spider-Man, what if gay Spider-Man doesn't sell? We're still going to sell gay Spider-Man, but it doesn't sell. We're still selling it. These people don't understand marketing. Like I said, they're they're kind of this is the participation trophy generation sitting back here saying, "Oh, hey, look, see, it's doing so good. We're we're all right. We're okay. We're okay. COVID didn't hit us that bad. This is 2019 numbers, boy. Here's here's a can of uh, petroleum jelly. 2020 numbers are coming. Okay." Anyway, folks, I'm the last Raider. Please uh, don't forget to comment on this. Tell me what you think about the comic industry. Uh, as I said, this is where a lot of your 
your uh, new entertainment in uh, videos, you know, like movies, TV. This they get it from comic books nowadays. They're just strip mining comics, and whenever a new comic comes out, usually if it sells good, other than maybe Vagrant Queen, um, that 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 was abysmal. But anyway, <laughs> tell me tell me what you think uh, uh, right now about this, you know, because I. I maintain on this because I do see this as a direction of where the country is going because comic books are one of the easiest mediums you can look at and tell where the culture of the country is usually going. Right now we have a bunch of crazies in comic books who are trying to forcibly change the culture of the United States and thus change the political landscape and it's not working as well as they thought it would. Tell me what you think of the comments. Again, be sure to like if you enjoyed the video and subscribe if you're new here and, and want to see more comment content and hit the bell for notification because, hey, that'll tell you what's going on. Um, also, as usual, folks, I'm the last Raider. Stay safe, stay frosty, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye now.